the war in Syria represents a new low for the international community. We're seeing a war without law, as well as seemingly a war without end. Uh, it's very, very striking that we're living in an age of the bombing of UN convoys, never mind the targeting of hospitals. So we were so surprised and shocked when we saw our colleagues covered with their blood uh, and uh, giving their last breaths. I don't know how to describe that. Uh, it's so hard emotionally. Um, it's like you are losing what of one of your precious in front of your eyes. We're witnessing a profound surge of violence against civilians, against health workers, patients, facilities, humanitarian convoys across a full spectrum of countries that is really shredding the accountability and protections that are contained in the Geneva Conventions. The attack on Kunduz was a sustained attack over an hour, despite the fact that all the, the parties knew us at our GPS coordinate. We must say that it was our bigger loss in terms of lives. 42 people died, 14 of our staff. This was a tragic mistake. This is a period when there's the danger of vacuum around the world and a danger for the abuse of power by states that are strong enough to do so. The international sense of conscience and consciousness that led to the responsibility to protect uh, in the early 2000s has certainly been eroded. People are struggling to respond. They're building clinics and hospitals and underground bunkers. They're documenting these attacks and publishing them. They're taking measures to the UN Security Council. Stop bombing hospital. Stop bombing health workers. But up to Stop now, these measures have not had much effect in deterring attacks. But many courageous individuals and groups continue the fight. This is a fight that's going to last well into the future. We believe that war stopped at the door of our hospital, and we want to preserve that. And we want to preserve access to healthcare in, uh, in war zones. We need, that's a battle that's worth to fight.